Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing? Lift the supplies needed by colonizers. Starship 2.0's economics must also be taken into account. You don't just build a massive rocket because you have a few billion on hand. You'll Good evening, Daron. Hey, evening, Fred. How you doing? Well, last time I checked, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Make sure stuff's looking okay here. Over there, John? Yeah, I'm here. You're still up on the other link. Oh, I'm on the other link. Yeah. Oh my. I guess I don't know how to do this. Yeah, you're gonna have to sign out of hang up and then come in on the, the QWP link. Um, All right, well this just is turned a over to uh, six PM here yeah. it looks like. Um Welcome everyone to the Denver Radio Club um, Elmer okay. session. Very similar to our Wednesday night learning net, uh, but it's not a net. We're not gonna be taking any check-ins. You don't have to be a ham radio operator, um, but it's just a general Q&A to learn about uh, ham radio, STEM topics, and uh, there'll be more people joining as the uh, evening goes along here, but we all have uh, 60 minutes for this session, and then at uh, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, we'll have our meeting. Um, which is going to be on the topic of <clears throat> skin effect and uh, presented by John Portoon, W6NBC, uh, who's uh, presented uh, previous uh, informative uh, presentations in the past. So, uh, yeah, so stick around for that. Um, if you've seen our website recently, you'll see that it's been uh, kind of updated and refreshed a little bit. Still always a bit of a work in progress. Um, we do stream these um, Elmer sessions, our learning nets, uh, and the meetings on youtube.com forward slash Denver Radio Club. So if you do miss these, you can go on there. Or if you want to, for example, watch it on your smartphone or smart TV this evening. Oh, that didn't take me to the right place there. I'll have to find what I just did there. Um, youtube.com forward slash Denver Radio Club. You can watch this evening's Elmer session or the upcoming meeting. So all of that being said, I'll go ahead and just open up to the group. Does anybody have any comments, questions, anything you'd like to bring up for the um, learning net this evening? Uh, let me know. We're at our session, I guess. You should see, um, also, if you're on the Google Meet, I'm sharing my screen. So um, I'll be showing up, uh, just showing uh, different things, club-related and uh, topics that we've uh, talked about in the past and uh, things that are uh, related to what we're talking about. So there's a bunch of stuff up here um, I can bring up. Um, but again, um, if you have any technical difficulties, let me know. Feel free to put any questions in the chat or um, and something else is here. This is Jeff. Can you hear me? Jerome, this is Jeff. Can you hear me? Let's see here. Um, yes, Jeff, I, I guess, hear you here. Uh, Kevin Schmidt, uh, KZ or KPS, had followed up here um, a week ago um, to a topic that we had spoken about in the past on, our, on a past uh, learning net. Um, he does a pretty good follow-up here. I'll go through this here real quick. Uh, June 1st, learning net, a question was brought up. Uh, does transmitting on an amateur radio station with a wire antenna increase the propensity of a uh, lightning strike? Uh, so. Does transmission alone cause any more um, 
percentage is there any more percentage higher percentage of a lightning strike if you're transmitting versus not strike uh, or versus not transmitting excuse me so he goes on to state um let's see he went and asked that question to lightning data center uh, located in uh, denver area conducts some monthly meetings um they deal with lightning electrical shocks and responded to their uh, his question consensus was that radio frequency transmission would not increase your chances of being struck by lightning uh, there have been several instances that victims talking on cell phones have been struck, but it may have been more the situation of uh, being outside during a thunderstorm uh, that allowed them to be struck, uh, struck, not merely the uh, the cell phone. So, uh, HT radio, handheld radio, uh, should not increase, would not increase your chances of being struck for the same reason. Um, he asked another question: uh, Are there any reports of radio operator being struck by lightning from lightning strike? Uh, uh, are there any reports uh, struck by lightning from lightning strike their antenna and conducted into their radio via coax? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so basically, he's asking, I guess, for a more uh, fixed radio with an antenna 100, 200 feet away, whatever, via coax. Um, would that still ha have an issue there? So um, lightning typically carries voltages between 500,000 to 1 million volts. Highest recorded was 1 billion. Um, since the station's antenna has both height and uh, should be grounded, lightning can be attracted to that. Uh, operator holding a microphone or wearing a headset can be electrocuted in this instance. Uh, an expert conveyed that a local Denver television station was operating with a remote truck that got struck and the engineer working on a uh, computer got shocked. Uh, this was in the 70s and was only uh, aired once uh, with their news and never uh, acknowledged after that. Um, other reporters of uh, 911 operators uh, having their communication center struck Dispatcher's getting uh, shocked. Um, so uh, his takeaway uh, from KZ or KPS here, Kevin, uh, when lightning is forecasted and approaching, one should disconnect their antenna from coaxes to prevent damage to their equipment and not operate their stations for safety's sake. So a uh, pretty good follow-up there. Um, I know anecdotally also uh, Fred a 0 jk has also um, mentioned something, I think, in the past, or uh, LAI um, about their neighbors. Um, uh, home being struck and it uh, arced over to his equipment. But uh, yeah, interesting follow up. Um, yeah, appreciate that, Kevin, if you're on here. Um, but I'll throw it out to the group. Uh, anyone else? Any other comments, questions on that, or anything else um, so far for this evening's uh, Elmer session? Please let me know. JK. Hey, hey, zero JK with a comment. Hope everyone is doing well. We are definitely having a heat wave, definitely in a lot of the uh, major portions of the United States. Um, so stay stay cool and uh, take precautions for that. Um, definitely in drought times, unfortunately. So it's uh, kind of uh, interesting where we're at with those sorts of things here. Um, yeah, we have another uh, 55 minutes or so here. I can waffle on, but um, I'll throw it out to... If anybody here on the chat has any comments, questions, please let me know. Hey, hey, zero JK, are you copying me, Darone? Hey, Jeff, are you copying? Let's see what else. Um, again, this isn't a, a net, so you don't need to be licensed to uh, to chime in. So if anybody has anything, don't hesitate to uh, to jump in at any given time. Um, otherwise, I'll kind of just uh, keep bringing things up here. Um, Major thing we were talking about recently is uh, field day, obviously, uh, two weeks um, or one week from this Saturday and just a week and a half or so. Um, June 25th and 26th, uh, you'll see some uh, photos uh, rotating here um, on our main page. I hope to uh, fill in more uh, with uh, a non-field day at some point, but uh, these are the kind of experiences uh, we hope to try to provide. Um, so June 25th and 26th, um, a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. More over on, uh, yeah, YouTube, uh, w0tx.org forward slash uh, field day uh, for full information. Uh, we operate 12 p.m. Saturday to 12 p.m. Sunday. Uh, Talking frequencies are, are just our normal club repeaters. So if you've uh, checked in on a net, uh, you should be able to uh, 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 ask for any help or anything. Uh, we're at the Prospect Arena in uh, West Arvada, 13805 um, uh, West 52nd Street. So, um, yeah, fun event, not too far out here. Uh, we are on the uh, field day locator as well. Um, if uh, P 
people look on there and not anywhere else they should be able to find us there as well uh, but uh, yeah we have the whole uh parking lot equestrian arena and uh, uh whole park area here so we have quite a bit but we're mostly going to be in the um in the parking lot area it's uh quite a lot larger in person than it, than it shows here in, in 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 photo on the map here so um yeah, Hello, we had a lot of fun Jerome? last year, as Jerome. spoken um, recently Plug here. In your heads we were taking a lot of um, Plug in your heads in. Um, Hello. efforts to provide a better framework and groundwork for how we put this together. So, uh, you know, we have a more official uh, field day committee yeah, Jim. Um, now, Keep and waving a lot of people <laughs> helping out with that. So, uh, just watching the video Jerome. from uh, last year, so this is kind of what you uh, would, would hope, to, hope to expect, and... Uh, We'll have a lot of antennas, a lot of radios. Um, we'll be doing FT8 Run. and uh, CW, and there'll be all sorts of stuff going on. So, um, yeah, June 25th and 26th, uh, you've all asked for. Hey, Zero JK, Jerome, plug in your headset. Hey, Zero JK, you're not here. It takes, it takes place once a year, so. Hey, uh, Zero JK. Uh, don't miss it. Be there and be square, um, as they don't say. Jerome, so, um, Jerome. Yeah, first time, if you're Jerome, experienced, Jerome. whatever it may be. Uh, we'd love to have you out there and uh, show you the ropes and, and operate and, and, and whatnot. So Jerome, I guess I'll throw it out to me? the group. Anybody have any questions on uh, our upcoming Jerome. field day? Let me know. Daron, you're not hearing us. Daron, your headset's not working. Daron. Let me see here. Daron. Daron, I'm talking, but you're not hearing me. My audio must not be working. Is my audio working? Yep, yep. No. No. Oh. Down, 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 down. Hmm. You're five by five, uh, by my reading. Uh, yeah, he. We can hear him, but he can't hear us. Sorry, I've been just. Uh, hmm. God, I can hear him. <laughs> yeah, well, you can hear him, but he can't he hear can't, us. He can't hear us. We're talking, and he's not hearing us. He keeps asking for people to say something, and nobody. Everybody talks, and he doesn't hear it. Hmm. Um. Testing one, two, three, four, Test. Darone. Testing Darone? Through. Hello, Darone. Can you copy? Darone, your, your headset's not working. Test. Let me um, drop and rejoin here. What the hell is going on here? Uh. Well, this is wonderful. Um. and launch and funding and support of amateur radio satellite operations. Um, this statement here, I won't read the whole thing, but it's, um, you know, an opportunity. Text, I assume you're throwing out there a QST uh, call in. It's an opportunity to operate our equipment using 
no commercial resources to demonstrate our preparedness. It's a contest, but also a lot of fun. Let's see how our event went this year. It took place at the Prospect Arena. Friday afternoon, myself, Darone, K1DBC, Barb, W0BKS, and Jim, K0TOR, we went to the Salvation Army Emergency Disaster Warehouse to load the vehicles and get them transported to the field day site. We showed up and pre-staged the vehicles and planned out how we would set the field day up. Eventually, yeah. There oh, he is. Drone. <laughs> drone, do you copy? Do you hear us, Drone? <laughs> well, we Me. got the finger. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. He, no, he yeah, I know. can hear you. I can hear you. You can hear me, right? Oh, oh okay. There you go. You guys should have told me earlier. I'm sorry about that. Well, I'll, yeah, sorry about that. Let me show you what I'm... Windows, Windows and technology and all sorts of stuff here. Um, Is that an oxymoron, Windows and technology? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> all right. I so think I'm all this stuff's you just a fad, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. It won't last. It's not, it's right. Exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm guessing you didn't hear me at all, ever, correct? No, we heard you. You couldn't hear us. Okay. Okay. Yep, I can hear you now. Um, not sure what happened there, but... Uh, I will try to keep making sure that that keeps working here. So you can keep, you still hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. we've always heard you. Yeah, okay, I okay, you always heard me. I, I got some comments here. When yeah, I spoke it. enough. Yeah, please go right ahead. Yep. Okay, we were talking about lightning and uh, the neighbor's, my neighbor's house being struck and then uh, coming back to the utilities and burning up my ham radio gear. Uh, that lightning was... Uh, uh, hit was at the base of the foundation, right at the utility ground where that uh, transpired. So it must have been a ground to cloud uh, uh, discharge. But I also wanted to make sure that we added that disconnect the power uh, cord uh, to your equipment uh, and along with uh, disconnecting your antenna. So my antennas uh, didn't get hit. And, but that uh, came through uh, the power uh, system. And not only did my equipment get fried, but neighbors around had uh, fax machines and s stereos, whatnot, uh, uh, also affected by that, uh, that discharge. So also, uh, it doesn't seem to matter wh where we're at uh, we're susceptible for, uh, to getting hit. I know uh, W6OAV had a great story about uh, being out mobile and his uh, mobile antenna while he was uh, out driving got hit. And I guess the f individual who was behind him, driving behind him, actually seen it take place. And uh, when Bill got out, took a look, uh, you know, his mobile antenna was fried. But anyhow, uh, I hope Bill's getting better. I didn't realize that uh, uh, he was having some issues there. So, but anyhow, back to you, Daron. All right, sounds good there. Thanks there, uh, Fred. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was uh, through the power mains. Yeah, it's it's electricity is very powerful. It's uh, and it takes something like this sometimes to to teach us that. But yeah, um, very very cool. Yeah, uh, and I appreciate yeah Kevin's follow up and uh, yeah thanks. Uh, Thanks again for uh, your follow-up there. So, yeah, um, I had brought up a few things there. So if anybody has anything on anything I brought up, go ahead. So that wasn't different. It's quiet on my end still. Okay, no, that's okay. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, what else? Um yeah, um, I'll throw it out to the group here now that my uh, stuff is straightened out here. Yeah, uh, again, welcome to the uh, the Denver Radio Club um, uh, Elmer session. Very similar to our uh, Wednesday night learning net, just a great place to learn about ham radio and STEM topics and electronics and everything that uh, um, 
it covers. So uh, Elmer, W0TX.org, if you have any questions, that uh, goes to Fred. And uh, again, YouTube.com forward slash Denver Radio Club and uh, groups.io forward slash G forward slash Ham Learning Net. Um, I'll throw it out to the group. Uh, if anybody has any comments, questions, anything you'd like to bring up for the uh, Elmer session this evening, please let me know. I have a question. Yeah, go right ahead. Um, I have a, a mag mount antenna on the roof of my pickup truck that I bought at Ham Radio Outlet years ago. And uh, the uh, SMA connector on the end of the coax got torn off. Don't ask how. <laughs> and uh, how, how do I put another SMA connector on there? I can do PL connectors and and that kind of thing but I but I don't have I don't think I have any tools for doing an SMA connector Has anybody uh, done that before I certainly have it with crimp tools so there's a crimp tool for SMA oh absolutely I use it all the time okay because I have crimp it's tools a, it's for, a paladin device as I remember Okay, I have crimp tools for, for the you know larger coax. You just need to get the right set of uh, uh, jaws for it. Okay. And yeah, that's all. Yes. Yeah. Question. So question. Uh, is it cheaper to uh, buy a new antenna rather than the price of the tool to crimp? Well, <laughs> I, I already have the tool, so if I just just the, just the jaws, then they're fairly inexpensive. But I understand your point. <laughs> I wish. I wish the uh, the coax wasn't uh, permanently molded into the antenna. That would have been easier just to attach a new coax than to have to fix yeah, the one the, I have. Yeah, there are the small jaws. Okay. They're, well, yeah, they're forty six dollars. <laughs> oh well, maybe I do go buy another antenna. <laughs> yeah, but you only need to buy these once. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I'm a little more careful, I won't tear off the next one. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Co comment, Daron. Fred, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I sent you an email there concerning uh, participating in the field day activities did, there yeah. of operating yeah. on the radios. And uh, I just wanted to make note to any of those out there who uh, want to uh, participate and, and uh, operate the radios or what, you know, uh, to maybe take a look at. Uh, uh, a website here at the ARRL Field Day Basic Training. If you uh, uh, type that in, it goes into uh, uh, the procedures for operating on the radio. So if you've done it in the past or if you're just a newbie that uh, uh, would like to try, uh, give that a look and get yourself prepared uh, on some of the basics there for uh, operating uh, during field day. Back to you, Drone. All right, sounds good there, Fred. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for that uh, information there. Yep, uh, basics of uh, field day is just the, uh, the field day exchange. I'll see if I can uh, bring up some audio from, uh, from last year. But uh, yeah, uh, we operate in two-person teams, and uh, one person operates the radio and uh, goes, goes through these uh, kind of exchange, which is, uh, Fred mentioned, uh, we're uh, three Alpha Colorado uh, W zero. Well, when you're calling CQ, you got CQ CQ W zero TX three Alpha. All right, W zero TX. Um, are you? Excuse me. CQ CQ Field Day. CQ CQ Field Day. I'll just read what's here because they know better than I do. And then the exchange, as mentioned here, is uh, the um, three Alpha, which is the number of stations and the. Uh, uh, the way that we operate, uh, Alpha, Bravo, um, and then um, Colorado. And it's a very basic exchange. We use um, software to log it um, on a computer, and it uh, can always be done by hand and then uh, transferred over to a computer, whatever you're uh, comfortable with, uh, uh, N3FJP. Um, but uh, yeah, you'll often see a two-person team, uh, one person working the radio, one person uh, manually uh, logging the contacts. So um, it's it's a very it's pre pretty quick, but um, 
keep skipping past the parts I want there. Um, once you get into it, it's actually not too bad. So uh, let me see if I can pass this audio through here real quick. If I have this. Used HP Toughbooks running Windows 10 and M3 FJP field day contesting logging software. And we had everything networked up so we knew all the contacts that we were making. So this was from in our, uh, or the Salvation Army. Uh, the th um, Salvation Army uh, comm vehicle there that uh, hauls up the uh, the comm vehicle or the comm trailer or excuse me the antenna. Um, so yeah, that's uh, this is kind of what you're uh, what you um, would be expecting to do during a, um, uh, a operator's position, uh, either uh, uh, doing the logging or um, or doing the radio. So um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, come check things out. I appreciate that email and that follow up there, Fred. Um, yeah, throw it out to the group. Anyone else on? Uh, Field day or anything else? Go ahead. Also, also comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, if you uh, haven't done this before, uh, you make yourself out a little three by five uh, card uh, with the procedure without with the information there, so you can have that in front of you, and uh, uh, that way you won't uh, get uh, hopefully won't get mic right, but but have the procedure written down on the three by five. Uh, card that you can have in front of you. And we definitely encourage uh, uh, folks to come up and and experience field day and amateur radio. Back to you, Daron. Perfect. Thanks there, uh, Fred. Um, yeah, ARL provides a lot of stuff. I did see that uh, Jeff posted something in here earlier. I, pos I apologize about that. Uh, but uh, let me see how to, how to solder SMA uh, connectors here. Uh, so... And in Mouser lists all kinds of SMA connectors that are solderable. Okay. Okay. Yeah, soldering is a pretty big uh, part of the hobby, and uh, definitely don't be afraid to get in there. That's what a part of. I, I I need to not forget to do this, but I want to bring up some. I have some boards that aren't populated with anything and just a bunch of spare components, and I'd love to have just a, a place where somebody can come and test and try soldering for the first time or get some experience with it. So. Um, through hole soldering, don't be afraid to, to try to do that. It's actually not too terrible. Um, and then uh, surface mount uh, gets a little bit trickier, but uh, I'm still yet to do that. But uh, here's uh, how to replace a, 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 an SMA connector. So onto a, a PCB board, it looks like here. So I'm sure into an antenna, it's probably a, a simple simple connection as well, just a simple, a simple solder point. So yeah, very cool stuff there. All right. Um, Another half hour or so here of this evening's um, learning net Elmer session, whatever you like to call it. Um, that might be something we might be rebranding, I guess, at some point. Who knows? To make things just uh, more more unified. Um, you know, as as you might be noticing, our club is uh, changing for the better. You know, we're always just trying to to move forward and you know provide better for our our members, and we're here to serve you. So. You know, our website's getting better and, you know, we're providing more stuff on social media, more things on YouTube, things like that. So, you know, we'd love to have more participation if, if, if you'd like to participate. There's a lot of activities we have going on, a lot of uh, volunteer opportunities. So um, we have 450 plus dues paying members. And uh, yeah, so if there's any time you ever want to get more involved, don't ever hesitate to to let anyone know because uh, everyone's here to, to help. Um, there's a lot of, lot of people... Uh, who are willing to help. So, um, comment quick. Yeah, go ahead, Fred. Yeah. Uh, we got to keep our, uh, eyes open for visitors, uh, coming to the field day. Uh, we've got, uh, representatives that, uh, uh, a double R L what is our, our, uh, section manager is supposed to be making the rounds, whether or not they, uh, uh, get, uh, to, our particular uh, uh, site, uh, but we want to make sure that to uh, uh, talk with them when they come through. I believe we get extra points, don't we, for uh, uh, 
uh, sh showing them around and yep. and uh, uh, just uh, the field day activities that we have. So uh, we definitely encourage uh, those to us, you know, to our members to interact uh, with these uh, folks when they come through. Put out the word there for amateur radio. AA0JK back to Daron. Perfect. Thanks there, Fred. Yep, uh, got an email from ARL, um, and uh, it's probably to ARL members, but and if you'd send up like the Colorado section or whatever section here, but uh, as long as we have our thing on the uh, ARL field day locator, which we do, uh, they Robert Wareham uh, ends your yes. Q uh, will be traveling out to as many uh, sites as they can. And uh, yeah, he did visit uh, last uh, year and he gave some things for me to hand out and I completely forgot to hand those things out uh, to the to the people who had uh, helped with that field day, but uh, kind of more until the end of that. But uh, yeah, so ARL field day locator, there's quite a few sites here um, in the, uh, the Colorado area. So um, let's see. So yeah, we're um, here, W0TX. So, um, yeah, very, very cool. Sent out, email sent out by a new section manager or a, some, or Amanda Alden, uh, K1DDN. I, I think she was appointed to something here, but uh, I can't remember. So, um, all right, this is uh, K1DBC, um, host for the uh, learning net here. Uh, as Fred spoke about, yeah, absolutely, you know, um, we saw the back of his head there, Mark N zero XRX. Uh, he this is uh, his neighborhood. Um, he owns this com trailer here. I don't know if I have a good photo of him here, but um, we've uh, we've put up our large banners in front of the kind of the <laughs> the entrance to this area here. So a lot of the neighbors there, uh, some of their neighbors there visited last year, and a lot of the neighbors hopefully should visit this year. So um, whether it be them or anybody from the public or whomever it may be, you know if you feel like you can show people around or help people, you know, I'm, we're more than happy to have you do that. Uh, uh, let them know what, uh, what they're doing, what we're doing here. And, uh, if you find somebody lost, uh, let them try to help them as much as you can. So, uh, we're an odd, uh, bunch, uh, at, at times, uh, cause of what we're doing, but, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of explanation, but, uh, there's a lot of overlaps between what we do and, uh, even, the equestrian arena and, and, and agriculture, you know, um, you know, agriculture, manufacturing, electrical engineering. I, I, there's a whole ton of uh, collaboration between all this stuff here. So, um, yeah, I'll throw it out to the group. We have another half hour here. Any other questions in regards to field day? Any other events coming up? Um, please let us know. Yeah, this is Steve. There's one thing I'm curious about. Um, I'm debating on whether to bring any electronic equipment to field day or not. Do you know if there's a place to park in the shade? That's a good question. Yeah, so this arena really doesn't uh, help for that, really. Um, to answer your question, no. We will have a few of these like 10 by 10 tents that you'll be able to put equipment in. Um, people were doing some soldering and, and things like that. We were, we, there was even torrential downpour and we work, were working under these tents. So, and there should be some other covered things, but parking, covered parking, probably not. But uh, for some equipment, we might be able to provide some coverage from the either rain or, or weather, whatever it may be. Uh, let me know if that answers your question or if you have anything else on that. Well, that answers the question, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, in years past, we've been up at the Chief Hosa campground, you know, and, and, and now that we've, we're taking care of a lot more admin in the background, that might be another uh, option we look at in the, in the past. And that provided a lot of uh, coverage for, for car, for camping uh, and for, for vehicles. So, um, but uh, no, this year, not, not so much. So, uh, but it is a free uh, camping event. There is a plenty of space for RVs or tents or cars, whatever it may be. Um, so, uh, come one, come all. We are uh, happy to, to have you there. We'll be meeting up probably. We'll be starting some pre-staging of stuff Friday afternoon. And then um, there'll be people uh, throughout the event uh, on site, on premises there um, throughout uh, Sunday uh, afternoon. So um, we'd love to see you out there. Uh, 
again, yeah, this is a meeting for us, by us. So if you have any questions in regards to ham radio, electronics, um, anything that ham radio covers or STEM or STEAM, anything that, that you might want to um, bring up, let us know. Okay, um, what else, what else? Another event we really haven't brought up too much in the past, it's actually occurring this weekend. Um, not related, not radio related to us, but it uh, takes, uh, we uh, um, represent one of our served agencies, the Salvation Army, um, in the Littleton uh, Mile High Hook and Ladder uh, Fire Muster. Um, j uh, yep, this Saturday, June 18th, uh, there's a, pride, a parade that starts on uh, Littleton Boulevard uh, West in South Bannock and then goes down uh, to the uh, Rappo Community College uh, parking lot. And at which time uh, the uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. there's a muster. And it's uh, just showing off a lot of uh, uh, historic and uh, a newer fire apparatus. And uh, again, we're showing off the Salvation Army canteen vehicle you may have seen in, in some videos. Uh, so a lot of fun, you know. Um, We've done it for a couple of years in the past. So if you're around the uh, Littleton area, around uh, Arapaho Community College area, uh, June 18th, Saturday, uh, come check us out. We'll be just kind of in the middle. Uh, you won't be able to, uh, to miss us. We'll be uh, next to the, uh, who's the other agency? Um, Salvation Army and then the other one. I can't remember at the moment, um, but we're right next to them. But a lot of fun. So family-friendly event, free. Uh, their sh little, little pitch here is, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, antique and modern fire rescue vehicles, jaws of life, auto extrication, water activities for kids spraying uh, fire hose, uh, children's uh, hospital medical uh, helicopter landing, and disaster preparedness uh, educational information. So um, Denver Aries will be supporting them actually for um, their radio communication support. So uh, you'll see some familiar faces probably. So it's a, a lot of fun. So, yeah, 36th annual Mile High Hook and Ladder um, Fire Muster and Parade um, here. So really cool stuff. All right. This is Jerome K1DBC. Again, this is an open conversation about ham radio, STEM, STEAM. I can bring up a few things, but we have another, it looks like, 25 minutes here until we uh, start our meeting. You can provide any questions in the chat here or via um, the audio, uh, let us know. What else? Um, sure I have some things, but um, I really can't think of anything really at the moment. Um, Great blogs to read, RTL-SDR, if you have any interest in software-defined radio. Um, I think we brought this up of our last learning net. Uh, the New England Workshop on Software-Defined uh, Radio, uh, 12th installment, um, will be taking place online June 3rd. Uh, ooh, so that's way past. So, But it's all online, so um, plenty of convert, um, videos there. Um, Let's see here. Well, the Avalanche scored two goals, if anybody that... Uh... Oh, did they? Yep. Oh, very cool. Yeah, Stanley Cup final, that's right. Yep. All right. Very cool. Yeah, I haven't... Uh... I haven't watched a hockey game in years and years and years. It's something I need to watch again here. It's fun stuff. Yeah, um, all sorts of local stuff. Have we talked about a lot of uh, weather-related things, a lot of uh, droughts within uh, our state and other states, uh, a lot of uh, heat heat waves. So um, emergency preparedness, as we've talked about, you know, don't catch yourself uh, in a situation that you can't uh, get out of. So, um, yeah, uh, really interesting stuff here. So. Yeah, high fire safety. Yeah, a lot of uh, might see some deployments with uh, 
some of the different agencies for the uh, the different um, uh, wildfires potentially we'll see here. So uh, hopefully not. Hopefully we're not going to see the same sort of wildfire seasons we've had in the past. But um, you know how things are looking. It's not looking great. So um, yeah, I'll throw it out to the group. Any other uh, comments, questions, anything else about uh, anything you'd like to know about the group, about ham radio, anything, uh, please let us know. Hey, hey, zero JK. Yeah, Fred, go ahead. Yeah, just uh, fill a little time here. Uh, we've we've been having uh, a great uh, get together, Annette, uh, over on six meters, uh, 53.090 every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. If uh, any of you happen to be up and about and have uh, uh, six meters uh, available to you. We encourage you to join us. A lot of interesting topics uh, come up that you don't normally uh, hear uh, during your uh, just your check-in nets. There's a little bit more to ham radio than just uh, checking into the net and nothing further goes on. We get some pretty interesting topics uh, going, but uh, join us if you have the uh, uh, six meters uh, available to you uh, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. 53.090 with 100 offset. Uh, look uh, to the Denver Radio Club's uh, uh, website there for specifics there if you don't already have that set up in your radio. But uh, just a, a nice round table event and uh, gives everybody an opportunity to uh, talk about their interests and activities going on. Back to net control, AA0JK. Hey, Fred, let me add something to that if I could, Jerome. Oh, go, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Um, like Fred said on six meters, uh, I connect my repeater, which is on UHF. So if you do not have six meters, but you'd like to, you know, get on a, small friendly net anyway and and uh hear people coming in on six you can go to my uh my repeater is on uh, four four eight nine or seven five four four eight nine or seven five and uh takes a one two three point zero tone one two three point zero it's up on blue mountains got uh, decent coverage and i connect it with all star link and um so if you don't have six meters you can give it a try on UHF and uh, we get several <clears throat> people that uh, connect. Uh, Lance Wilson comes, he's usually out on his bicycle and he's got bicycle mobile. So he comes in on there usually. And like Fred said, it's a good uh, friendly, friendly net. I'm wondering if anybody, Kathy and I went to uh, Hamvention in Xenia, Ohio. Wondered if anybody else on, uh went it was uh a good event <clears throat> it looked well attended uh with the new uh there at the uh green county uh fairgrounds and there if you haven't been there there's individual buildings there's several that they hold seminars and, and stuff in and then also for the uh the vendors and uh it was funny this year kenwood was suspiciously not there and i don't i none of us could understand that why they didn't have a presence this year so still kind of wondering about that uh other than that there's all you know all the all the major vendors <clears throat> uh, lots of uh, accessory stuff you know that people are building and and uh, some, a lot of good seminars i sat in a couple on a couple good seminars and uh uh, I went with the idea that I might buy a Elecraft K4, which I did, and ordered one anyway. Probably be a Christmas present because uh, the the vendors are having problems with, uh, you know, getting parts and everything. I guess I uh, ordered uh, a year ago a uh, uh, Maestro for a uh, uh flex radio 6400 and i still don't have it 
and that's a year and uh, wow. now they're saying well maybe fourth quarter so uh, that's nuts yeah it is it's it, it is nuts but uh, anyway that was our activity we were there friday and saturday we didn't go back sunday uh and uh and yeah, there's a k4 so anyway just to fill time that's uh, that's what we did Kathy, new extra. Kathy, oh, new yeah. extra. Yeah. <clears throat> My wife, Kathy, N0CRZ, uh, took her extra. Well, she took her general three, four years ago, three years ago at, at Dayton and, and passed the uh, general. And so she took her extra and uh, passed her extra. I think she missed three questions uh, is what they told her. So I'm proud of her for that. And uh, if I could get her on the air, but uh, it doesn't look uh, too pro <laughs> too promising. But uh, anyway, she does have her extra. So uh, about it. Very cool. Yeah, we we uh, yeah. Congratulations, Kathy. It's always great to hear uh, uh, people um, moving up and, and getting their tests. And uh, it's half the battle. So now she's extra. That's all the testing done. It's all all the testing done out of the way, unless they throw us a new test so um yeah and and yeah we've asked about uh, trying to get some uh, experiences from uh hamvention as well we haven't heard uh, much on our on our uh, learning nets either so uh yeah good question is if, if anybody's visited it um let us know because uh, we'd love to hear your stories all right so yep advent of youtube there's all sorts of uh people um taking videos and uh, getting their perspectives of things. So if you, if you did miss it, um, yeah, plenty of stuff online um, to, to watch. Uh, so yeah, you can think of it probably just a regular, or uh, just a, a larger ham fest with uh, more major vendors, um, but just all the same kind of uh, nerds and dorks and everyone playing around with stuff and a lot of fun. So yeah, I haven't uh, made my way out there yet. Um, so uh, maybe, maybe one year or so. Uh, yeah, and then a big thing is the uh, the vendor booth uh, or the um, the uh, uh, what was it the flea market, which is uh, another huge place to see as well. So yeah, glad to hear. I know in the years past, uh, I'm guessing it was probably with the old. I, I don't remember, but uh, they were dealing with uh, mud and whatnot. So hopefully, everybody trying to sell stuff had was able to. This year, the weather was really good for for Ohio. We got there on Thursday and it it rained all night Thursday night. I mean, it poured. Hmm. But then Friday and uh, there was a couple little short showers, but uh, the weather I'd say was unusually good this time. But anybody okay. that you know, if you're a ham radio person, you owe it to yourself if you can to at least make it to to. Uh, Hamvention once, and if you're an airplane uh, guy like uh, like I am, well then you need to try to make uh, Oshkosh uh, Air Venture, and it is it is so huge that I you just it's hard to to tell. There's 650,000 people go through there. There's uh, over 10,000 airplanes. There's any practically any airplane that you can uh, think of probably there in some form and uh, uh i think it was about there's some around 700 vendors and uh, there's over 5,000 volunteers and kathy and i volunteer on the ford tri-motor on the ground crew and uh, it's we have a lot of fun so we, this would be our sixth year i think so anyway like, see, like airplanes yep make, make make it to air venture sometime yeah, Air Venture. I think another one's fun in the sun. And yeah, looking at a photo here from uh, somebody operating uh, radio uh, from uh, Air Venture or EAA, excuse me. Uh, yeah, Air Show there. Um, yeah, obviously a huge overlaps with uh, uh, avionics and communications and aviation. So you'll you'll find you'll probably find some radio nerds within uh, within aviation as well. So um, yeah, really cool stuff there. Thanks there, uh, Jerry. All right. Yeah, we have another uh, 12 minutes or so here. Appreciate everyone uh, help uh, filling things out here. Um, yeah, 
Um, I'll throw it out to the group. A uh, little light here, but um, if anybody has any other uh, comments, questions, anything in regards to ham radio, electronics, uh, any projects you're working on, anything, uh, activities that we have coming up that you'd like to talk about or have questions on or anything, uh, please let us know. How about a little word from the sponsor? <laughs> yeah. I have an item. Go ahead. Um, in the next QST will be my next article. Comes out this next month. You might, uh, since we heard, I heard some activity about six meters. Uh, it, there is a, a six meter antenna in the uh, in this issue. It's an interesting design. It's uh, it's sort of a uh, stepchild of the famous copper pipe J pole, but it's not a J pole. It's in fact a inverted delta and delta slot antenna which for six meters quite an interesting little antenna so you might want to uh, it's not a, not yet out that's the current issue there we're looking at and, this is uh, a july uh, yeah edition. it's august it'll be in august oh it's the august okay gotcha gotcha, gotcha. it'll okay. be in the august issue so I'll keep okay. an eye out and uh, i could always give you a talk on it if you like because the Double in, the inverted delta is an interesting configuration, inverted delta skeleton slot. It's a vertical with gain and horizontal polarization, if you can imagine that in a vertical. <laughs> wow. Crazy stuff there. Yeah, thanks there, uh, John W6NVC. Yeah, so, yeah, they they do release their things there earlier. So this is a July edition of uh, QST, but yeah, August edition. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, look out for another article by their uh, W6NVC. Uh, Definitely a uh, um, uh, well-published uh, um, uh, friend of the club here. So, yeah, really cool stuff here. Uh, W6NVC.com, it looks like, for uh, all of his information here. So, yeah, yeah, definitely look out for that. Really cool. Yeah, that's me standing right up on the back of the platform there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I could see here, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it was actually Harry Truman. I uh, photoshopped yeah. my head over the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Very cool. Very cool. I love Photoshop. It's a great. Yeah. Uh, always, always doing funny things like this. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, all right. Yeah. Uh, that's the voice. Uh, and, uh, if you have a video, you'll be seeing a uh, John W six NBC there. Yeah. In about uh, ten minutes here, if I can uh, go back to our main page here, uh, he'll be giving a presentation on. Um, skin effect uh so um yeah stick around for that uh, another 10 minutes here um many informative presentations by him um it's a skin effects a phenom phenomenon that most hams have heard of many hams have heard of <laughs> but know little about uh, this presentation looks at where skin effect plays major roles in ham radio uh, most surprising uh, to many is the part it affects in balance. Uh, basic grasp of skin effect can pay big dividends in better antenna performance. So the minutia sometimes matters. So yeah, another 10 minutes. Uh, might be a good time to take a restroom break or whatever you may need. Um, but any other last minute items, uh, please let us know here. All right. Um, as mentioned, yeah, as obvious, uh, our web page has been updated a bit. Always a work in progress, but uh, we're really trying to make sure that everyone's aware of the, the more important things that we're doing, the more crucial things and, and time-sensitive things. So Denver Radio Club Field Day, as we've spoken about quite a bit this evening, right there at the top. We have our next meeting that we just were happening this evening, and our upcoming Ham Fest, um, Adams County Fairgrounds, Sunday, August 28th. So another uh, in-person meeting, in-person um uh, event there so uh, round table as well right below that a lot of effort goes into this it's our newsletter that's been happening for quite a while now since uh, 2011 at least I think well since 1917 at least um, but uh, the issues that we have online uh, go back to 2007 so um, a lot of our members uh, put efforts into publishing this and putting articles into this so you know, check that out. Um, you don't have to be a club member. Just right there on our front page. Just go uh, read those articles and check into um, recent club activity here. Let's see, and then right below that, yep, um, will be uh, this evening's uh, video here um, uh, updated. Uh, but again, uh, youtube.com forward slash Denver Radio Club. A little bit of a change for us, but uh, we're now uh, streaming on our uh, official uh, YouTube channel there. So if you've missed... 
Uh, we have about two years worth of videos of uh, meetings, learning nets, uh, Elmer sessions. Uh, so if you've missed out, um, they're all online. Um, Another, another video here, uh, Antenna and Tuners by uh, John Partoon, W6NBC. Another one, uh, Practical Foil Mantle Tennis. So yeah, uh, Antetic Antennas. So love to see you uh, uh, in here as well, uh, um, uh, John. So um, yeah, if you've missed something, it's all online. Um, again, it is streaming online. So if you want this evening to watch this Elmer session or this meeting this evening on your smartphone or smart TV, just search on YouTube or W0TX or uh, uh, look for Denver Radio Club. So enough of a spiel there. Um, another five minutes. Last minute items. Let us know. Hey, hey, zero JK. Yeah, Fred, go ahead. Yeah, I know during the learning net uh, we get all kinds of uh, uh, questions concerning uh, antennas and uh, uh, I highly encourage uh, everyone to uh, take a look at those roundtable articles. Uh, I know uh, Bill W6OAV has put a lot of effort in uh, putting together uh, articles concerning all aspects of antennas. And uh, I highly recommend that uh, uh, the folks uh, take a look at uh, what is available uh, they're on the uh, back issues of the roundtables because there's a lot of great information there to be had. So uh, do uh, uh, take advantage of that. AA0JK, back to net. Yeah, great point there, absolutely. Um, part of the efforts that we're going to try to have moving forward is getting these out of this sort of format where it's not really easily, it's buried, essentially. Um, kind of in a technical standpoint, unfortunately, at this point. So um, plenty of information. Yeah, as mentioned, uh, a roundtable um, index uh, by uh, W6OAV uh, is put out um, uh, monthly. So a lot of articles on antennas dating back to uh, 2011, 2007, as we've spoken about. Uh, tons of stuff here. So uh, if you have questions on that, yeah, w0tx.org forward slash roundtable. Um, go ahead. Somebody was in there. Daron? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, uh, I, I saw those the other day, but found that I couldn't. Uh, am, I, am I supposed to be able to click on those articles and see them? Unfortunately, that's the that's the part of the technical issue is it's not easily done like that at the moment. So there yeah. right now is this button that says click here to accept these conditions. I might just change the wording of that, but this is the link you click. And then you see a ah, list of okay. files here. And there's all the PDFs in here. So yeah, he, he makes an index of that. So yeah, hopefully in the next few months going forward, we'll, we'll have a, an easier, well, I'm gonna try to get all of this information out of there. So what you're yeah, looking own, for, go ahead, please, yeah. Yes, those are all accessible on that site right there where you're at. Uh, yeah, what he was wanting you, is to be able to just click on it, is essentially, he just wants no, to be able yeah, to click no, on this. Yeah, I, I know that's what's, what's yeah. in the future, but now he's uh, asking about uh, current, there, yeah. it's right there. You go to go to that uh, uh, section there, and uh, you can bring up all the uh, uh, articles via that website. Yeah. It just yeah. takes a couple extra steps there, but yeah. uh, it is it is all accessible. Yeah. Okay, so. I'm trying it right now. Yeah. Yeah. So just look at the the month and the year, and then you yeah. click on the click here to accept these conditions. Find the year. Find the month. And then it doesn't really show you the page in it, so you kind of just have to look for it. So yeah, um, ease of use for that. Definitely we want to get all this information less buried, taking less clicks and, and exactly what you're looking for. But in the meantime, that's the, that's the steps there. So, We've got boxes and boxes of uh, yes. old uh, round tables, and the idea will be to, to scan them. Uh, but that's a kind of a big project, and it's it'll it'll get started here one of these days. But we'll we'll yes. add to that as time goes on. Exactly. So if you look at the bottom of the roundtables as well, uh, they'll often post um, past roundtables, uh, which is really cool to see. A 1960 edition here, for example, in the uh, the June 2022 um, roundtable. So yeah, I'd love to have all of that 
um, out there because this is really, really cool stuff to try to look into that's uh, club related. So well, that, That's one of the things Kathy's going to... In fact, we got another scanner, so it's just a matter of yeah. you know, getting the time and getting started at it and uh, figuring out just how to yeah. you know, easily do it because they're stapled and so forth, so they'll have to oh, okay. be disassembled and then scanned and then back together, so work in progress gotcha yeah if you could give me a handful of, or a small stack of newsletters i could probably scan them in my spare time i've got a scanner at home okay well we can talk about that bill yeah thank you bill absolutely That'd be great yeah definitely appreciate that yeah this is a cool history that uh not a lot of us know just because it's buried and not it's just nobody knows so we have you like wanna, one minute left. Oh, go ahead, Fred. There, yeah. Okay, yeah. You want to want to scroll there on this particular issue? I don't know whether it's up or down, but we get a lot of comments there about people wanting to learn Morris code, and uh, uh, we've got an article uh, in this uh, month's issue here that might have some tips that uh, will uh, help those who are uh, uh, interested. And there it is, right there, uh, okay. learning the Morris Morris code there. So give that uh, yeah. uh, some of those uh, uh, websites and uh, recommendations there into consideration as you're trying to learn the Morse code or even improve uh, your code. And uh, hopefully that uh, uh, that will be received with uh, some good positive uh, results. Yeah. So uh, if you have an interest, uh, uh, do give it a shot. AA0JK, back to net control. Perfect. Thanks there, Fred. Yep. Uh, one last thing here. These are searchable if you control F and, and then that you can search text. That's how I found this one in particular. So um, that will be the last thing on that. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for being here this evening. This has been the uh, Denver Radio Club um, Learning Net Elmer session, whatever you may want to call it. Uh, just a general Q&A about ham radio and STEM topics. So uh, my name is Drone K1DBC. Appreciate everyone being here. Um, so with that, I'll throw it over to uh, club president or whomever wants to take over. Okay, Drone, thanks. <clears throat> I was going to have you talk a little bit more about field day, but our our, sure. our attendance hasn't changed it's too much. Low. So I think you've probably probably everybody's aware of it so yep. uh but uh you know just adding on to what you said earlier you know where there's a lot of uh, people can see you know a lot of changes in the round table there's a lot of changes behind the scenes that we're doing uh with the website and uh and trying to make things uh uh better and, and easier and uh, and all that so you know we expect some hiccups and uh and uh, so forth, but be, you know, be patient. There's a lot of, a lot of activity behind the scenes going on. Uh, so uh, also, you know, one of these days we're gonna, uh, we're gonna be, have Survey Monkey, and I wanna, I wanna get some, uh, some surveys out to just kind of get some interest and, and uh, like Daron said, just to try to make things